Joe Ferrari, April 20th. You guys know NBA playoffs are kicking off today, so I'm obviously pretty excited about this. Game's tipping off early, so me and Igor are gonna make our predictions and get together and do a show next weekend once the playoffs are a little bit back in swing. But first, we're gonna make our predictions on this series so far. Okay, so Orlando and Cleveland starting off at one o'clock today. Two defensive teams. Orlando started off the season really strong, surprised some people with their youth. Uh, Paulo's obviously been incredible. Um, Franz has, has taken, I don't want to say a step back, but hasn't been as consistent as he has been in his uh, rookie season. And, and I guess the first half shooting hasn't really been there. But defensively, top five team in the NBA, Cleveland as well. Uh, Cleveland looks to be at full strength. I, at first I was thinking, I was, I was saying, Orlando is probably going to be my pick, but just knowing that Cleveland has to win at least the series, knowing that Donovan Mitchell more than likely probably going to take off in free agency. I'm going to go with Cleveland in this series. Next off, we got Phoenix Suns. Now, Phoenix taking on Mini. KD and the guys, I mean, they haven't been obviously as good as we thought they were going to be. Uh, statistically, the worst fourth quarter team in the NBA this season. Minnesota and, and Ant ha have been obviously on a different level this season, finishing in, in um, second place. And they've just been really, really good. Really good in general. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go with Minnesota here. I know a lot of people are probably gonna take KD. Hopefully they're gonna you know try and spin some magic on this. Just they have no depth. They haven't been a great team all season. And I'm gonna go with Minnesota here. I think Minnesota might actually go on a run. Uh, next, okay. So we got Philly in New York, and New York has obviously lost a lot of players with injury, including Randall OG's missed some time. But Philly, I mean. I feel like every year they come back and it's a different piece, right? Like this year was, I guess, the emergence of Maxi, like the full-on emergence of Maxi. Last year we saw it have been the playoffs against Toronto. Um, the year before that, I guess, Ben's been there for a while. They had Harden last year. They had Jimmy the year before. There's always been someone really good. And people are forgetting this, right? Like you go back and actually I was thinking about it. They've always had someone really good with Joel. Nobody's been there. Different coaches. I know Nurse is there. New York has been a team that all season, first of all, Brunson, I was the only guy in Brunson when he was in Dallas saying that this guy is, you know, I mean, obviously not what he is, but a really good player. People are like, whatever, just getting minutes. He's surpassed my expectations of him, obviously. I can't lie to you there. What he's done with New York this year is, is, is insane. Being his size, limited athletically and all that, he's just been incredible the way that he's taken that team and, and just really been the leader of that franchise. I, I have to take New York here. I have to because, I mean, I'm just not seeing anything. Joel's coming off the injuries. We know he's 100% even though he's been pretty good once he's been back. I have to take Philly there. Next series today. Um, last one of the day. Lakers at Nuggets. Um, spoiler alert. Nikola Jokic is the MVP and, and Denver is going to win the championship again. That being said, when the Lakers won their title in that uh, bubble season in 2020, what they had over every other team was size. They had McGee, they had Dwight Howard, they had Anthony Davis. They had bodies you could throw at people, and they just they don't have that anymore. They have some of those guys, but they are missing the size to go against Jokic. And as great as AD is defensively, we saw it last year in the playoffs when he hit that stupid you know throwback shot um from three point like a step back that just went in and when a guy hits a shot like that it just demoralizes your team as long as jamal murray's playing in the playoffs denver's winning everything let's go on to the games tomorrow in the series tomorrow miami and boston jimmy butler of course can't catch a break i mean i, I don't want to say father times catching up to him because he's not an old man or, or anything like that but you can definitely tear, tell that they've you know tried to limit his games this season um, and obviously with that bad luck injury with, with Kelly Oubre last game. I mean, I can't look at you in the eyes and actually tell you I'm going to take uh, Miami. I can't. So I'm going to go Boston. They're 13 and a half point favorites in game one. I'm going to take them. Um, and, and obviously to win the series. But I wouldn't be shocked if Miami ends up taking this. It would be an upset for the ages, even though what happened last season. With this Boston team, it would be an upset for the ages. The Clippers and the Mavs have, have had one of the best rivalries in basketball of recent years, even though it's just been a playoffs, I, I feel like almost every year they're playing each other in the playoffs. Luke is getting better every season, obviously. Um, Kyrie's really found his role as that second scorer. A lot of people didn't think that they'd be able to have two ball dominant guys getting their own, but they've done really well. When the Clippers went on that run about midway point of the season, when they went, I don't know, like 20 and five or 20 and one in whatever stretch they went in, a lot of people thinking, we're thinking that this could be a team that you know could go on and win a championship. Kawhi's hurt. I mean, it just was a matter of time until that happened. And uh, no matter who wins this series, I don't think either of these teams are going to win the title. But I would love to see one of them or both of them eventually get a ring.
That being said, I'm going to go with Dallas in this series. Um, Indiana's taking on the Bucks. This is, uh, I mean, Indiana's had the Bucks number for a while. Obviously, that coaching change in the middle of the season, I wasn't a fan of it. I mean, players are always lobbying for ex-players to get in. As coaches, Griffin paid his dues with the Raptors. He was, just, I mean, one of the best assistants in the game. From all that was said, he was courted by a lot of teams. He gets their team, goes on a great start, and they fire him for whatever reason. Players didn't like him. He didn't like Thanasis, whatever is there. That's clearly proved to be the wrong decision. Now, I mean, the Bucks go and win a championship, which is not going to happen. That obviously, that narrative obviously gets spun on the side, but I don't, I don't see that happening. That being said, I think that they still win against the Pacers, although I wouldn't be shocked if the Pacers would, would kind of upset. The only thing is Tyrese hasn't really been the same since that injury. Pascal's been a great addition, took him a few games to kind of get into his role, but he's been exactly what they needed. Would have been nice if they still kept Buddy Heald, even though they have a lot of depth on that team. Um, but I'm going to have to go with Milwaukee, just because Milwaukee at home too has been really good over the past five, six years. Um, so I'll take the Bucks there. Might go seven. Last series, OKC against the Pelicans. Um, I'll fill you guys in on a little something. So I've been obviously a, a Shea guy. I didn't really, as a Clippers fan, when he came into the league, I liked his game. Same thing with Brunson. I did not think he would be this good, but I was a big fan of his game. Um, that trade's going to go down as, I don't want to say one of the worst NBA history for Paul George because you got Paul George, but those eight or whatever first round picks along with it, even if you do that trade straight up, it's probably a loss. But I mean... I took Oklahoma City to win the championship around January. And I think at that point, it was still like 40 to 1. It's gone down about 10 points every month. Um, and people were telling me the whole time. A lot of people said they were going to lose in the first round. I mean, if they had the Lakers, people were saying they're going to lose in the first round. If they go to the finals, um, or at least to the Western Conference final, they take on a team like Denver. I'm, although I'm not sure with the math that would end up working. Denver, to be honest, is the only team that I can see that will actually take them out. Every other team, I can probably take them against in the West. Now, in the East, unless Boston or or, um, or Denver takes them out, OKC, I'm going to take them every series. Have a lot of faith in them. Pelicans, I mean, they can't catch a break. I, I thought the Pelicans were on the come-up last year. I was kind of hoping they were going to get a two or three seed. Big fan of Ingram. Zion took them, what, to be 300 pounds on the scales or more to kind of lose some weight. If those guys can get it together, that's another championship type caliber talent team they have with Herb Jones and Trey Murphy and all the guys that they have there. I mean, Valanciunas doesn't even get minutes anymore, but um, after that rant, I'm going to go with OKC to win that first round series. Okay, so I'm at eight minutes, a little bit longer than I wanted to, but it's been a minute. Um, after, um, like I said, I'm going to get together with Poyon and, and Igor on the weekend next week, and we're going to get together and get a show. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the playoffs. Thanks for checking in, and I'll see you guys later.